yeah, so just going to follow genius children and art artists. That sounds great. Um, so, Anyways, thanks everybody. I'm Mike. Um, I want to talk about weird. And when I think about weird, that's pretty weird. Okay, um, but that's me. Uh, I was born with one hand. Uh, it's called Poland syndrome. It's a long story. Uh, it makes baby pictures instantly recognizable, though, which is nice. And weirdness, ooh, weirdness is a little bit different. And some people, well, you know, they think it's a bad word, but it's not. I mean, really, weirdness is fantastic, right? Odd. I'll, I'll take that. Maybe not the, the witchcraft part, but. Uh, <laughs> Well, oh boy. Um, but weirdness is, is a lot of things, and it's a lot of things about me. You know, weirdness is funny. Um, there's, there, there's multiple games like that you can find. Uh, I found that this summer. I bet, I'd, I bet I'd probably beat most of you at that game. Um, but weirdness to me is important because it should be funny, and it should be engaging. But weirdness can also be beautiful, and it can pop up in already extraordinary moments and make them even better and more memorable. Uh, that's my daughter, by the way. You probably figured that out. Um, so weirdness for me is a lot of things. And I, I didn't even know I was weird for a while. And I didn't know if it was good or bad or, or what that even meant. But one of the first times I really thought about my weirdness was in Thanksgiving. And I was in second grade and I was in Miss Taylor's class way back in 1984. And in the United States, November means Thanksgiving, right? And Thanksgiving means turkey. And if you've been in second grade, you've probably created a hand turkey, right? Yeah, you already see where this is going. Um, <laughs> so you put your hand on the paper, and you trace it, and you make a turkey out of it. So that's great. Um, yeah, no biggie. Um, so I was working really hard on my hand turkey, and I, and I thought I was a pretty good artist. I was one of those kids that really needed approval from my teacher. So I was tracing it, and I hear from the kids sitting next to me, Mike's turkey looks weird, and they all giggle. And I look down, I looked at my turkey, it doesn't look weird. I looked at everybody else's turkey. Mine does look a little weird. That, I don't know if you've seen turkeys before, but they don't look like that. Um, so I tried to make it normal. Uh, it was not successful. Uh, it, it was, and so Miss Taylor came around, she's a great teacher. And she, as soon as she saw it, she kind of paused, and I think she had that realization that we've probably had as teachers sometimes. And the kid, same kid, said, I told you it looks weird. And so she grabs it and looks at it, and she said, well, it does look a little weird. That's okay. And she put it in her pile, and that was it. And it wasn't a teachable moment, and we didn't read stories about it. It just, it was weird, and that's okay. And the next day I came to school and there was a bulletin board with all our turkeys on it. And, and you could see mine and it stood out. And I thought, oh, that's not so bad. Um, and I would like to say that after that, my life was just smooth sailing. <laughs> <laughs> I was prom king and captain of the team. No, no. Um, and I try to figure out why. Why do people always still look at me weird? Why do they? Uh, you know, why are they treat me different, pick me last for sports? And I'm wondering if, if maybe it's a representation thing. We talk about representation a lot. So I want you to think of somebody in film or TV with a disability, some character. You've probably seen a few. You got one? Let me share your mind. <sighs> He's the guy on the right, by the way. Um, that's Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, if you don't know. And he had a very shiny nose, right? And all the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. You, you know, right? And so Rudolph, it's, it's, it's normalized that he's excluded. And it's OK. And, but it's not OK, right? And he saves the day. He saves Christmas. And then all the reindeer love him. What a great story. But it's not at all. It's a terrible story. Because it says that all I needed to do to find acceptance and love for my peers is to save the largest holiday on Earth. <laughs> That's it. All I had to do is save Christmas. Um, and then I'd find redemption. But with Rudolph, you know, what if Rudolph has asthma? Or a bum leg? Or sickle cell anemia? Or 
anxiety, or a million other things. Does he find his redemption? Is that even optional for him? Is my disability only valid when it helps someone else? So think about who you thought of. Was it a love interest in the hero of the story? It probably wasn't. There's a few, and we're getting better. Um, but there's mostly stereotypes. That one's particularly resonant with me. Um, so yeah, Captain Hook. But people with disabilities were not superheroes and were not villains, mostly. We're pretty average. 15% of the world, one in seven. There's more than seven people in this theater, so there's probably, I'm not the only weird one. Um, and that's a lot of us, and it's a lot of our kids, and it's a lot of our students. So what do we do? How do we do that? And I've got a couple things that I think would really help. And the first is make the weird part of class. This is a prosthetic my design students uh, and I are working on. It's for me. It's a pretty great class. We 3D print it, we design it, they take measurements, and it's instantly a part of class, and it, it normalizes as normal as I can be, but it makes it something that can happen. It's a valid part of my identity. Why wouldn't it be? And the kids see that in class and acknowledge that. And another great thing you could do is just show off your weird. I know it's there. I know it's in a lot of you. Maybe you really like My Little Pony, or you collect sneakers, or whatever you're into. That's awesome. Make it a part of class. And challenge those stereotypes. Because I'm Captain Hook, who's around power tools all day. And I teach my students. I'm the one-handed guy in the makerspace with the shop, which there's a lot to unpack with those statements and a lot of stereotypes. Um, because honestly, we don't know who we're going to inspire. We don't know who needs to see that, you know, and, and it really helps our children see things and maybe start to look past those stereotypes. Uh, because really, when we personalize our learning, we create something that's unique and beautiful, and everyone can do that. It's unique and beautiful and weird, just like my turkey. Thank you. <laughs>